GTR. Hello, I'm Dan Sindel, and welcome to Easy GTR Online Video Guitar Lessons. Today is part one, building the foundation of Pachelbel's Canon in D major, and we definitely have a lot to talk about today. So, if you have not yet downloaded the ebook, this is a great time to do that. Please go to www.easygtr.com, sign up for the newsletter, we'll send you a link to download the ebook, and that is what we're going to be using to study today. Now, today we got so much to do. We're going to be talking about the key of D major itself, what it means to be playing inside that key, a little basic theory along with it. We're going to be building the foundation with some basic chords and some more advanced chords for intermediate to advanced players. We got a few extra surprises, so let's get started. The first order of business is to do a brief overview of the major scale itself. Now, the major scale is a series of eight notes, eight being the pitch name repetition of one, in which the connection between successive notes are built upon a formula of half steps and whole steps. By moving in a simple formula of half steps and whole steps, we can build a major scale from any note of the musical alphabet. And of course, a half step equals the movement of one fret, and a whole step equals the movement of two frets. Next, I'd like to talk to you about the degree of scale. And this pertains to the position of where the tone in the scale resides. And this helps us build triads and more complex chords, such as 7th, 9th, 11th, and 13th chords. And more importantly, we can determine the quality of the chord. Depending on what degree of the scale a tone might reside on, we can determine if the chord has a major, minor, or diminished sound. To further illustrate my point of working in the key of D major, I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite reference tools, the guitar wheel. Check it out. I'd like to talk to you about the key of D major, a little bit of theory, and I'd like to use the guitar wheel to demonstrate this. So let's zoom on in, and let's look at the master key area. And this tells us the key of D has two sharps in the key. And by moving to the outer edge, these numbers here represent the degree of scale. And they work hand in hand with these notes in the white area. And what it means is D would represent the first degree of the scale, E would be the second degree, and so on. And these numbers here in the yellow are the frets. Now by moving to the inner part of the wheel, the green area tells us the major scale degrees, and most importantly, the quality of the chord. If we look at the numbers that are bold, 1, 4, and 5, this tells us our major chords. 1 is a D major, 4 is a G major, 5 is an A major chord. And by looking at the lower case numbers, 2, 3, and 6, this tells us our minor chords. 2 is an E minor, 3 is an F sharp minor, 6 is a B minor, and 7 is our diminished. Now. What I'd like to do is talk about the chords used in the canon in D. Let's do some quick analysis. And we can tell here in the first bar of the song, our chords would be a D major, A major, B minor, and F sharp minor. So we would have a 1, 5, 6, 3 progression. The second measure has a G major, D major, G major, A major, which would be a 4, 1, 4, 5 progression. Okay, great. We've just learned some basic theory. And I think we're ready to move on. We're going to go to the first page of the tab notation part of the manuscript. And we're going to address the first two measures of the song. And we're going to lay down the bass line. Okay, we're going to play to the bass line. I'm going to use my first finger just to make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Okay. So we're going to join in as soon as the measure repeats. Here we go. D, A, B, F sharp, G, D, G, A. One more time. D, A, B, F sharp, G, D, G, A. 
there is 56 measures in the song and that phrase of the bass line is two measures so it repeats itself 28 times well let's move on to playing the basic chord structure for those of you who have downloaded the ebook this is a great time to turn to page two and we're going to look at the easy chord forms now what we're going to do is we're going to strum the chord once per quarter note okay here we go three four Moving on to the alternate chord streams, and just so you guys know, it is not a requirement for you to play these chords in order to play the canon in D major. Just as a quick note, for you beginning players, this is a great study on actually playing different voicings of the chords. So let's look at bar one. We have got a D with the D in the bass. Our second chord form is an A with a C sharp in the bass. Our third chord form is a B minor with a B in the bass. And our last chord of the first measure is an F sharp minor with an A in the bass, which of course is our third interval. Now the first chord of the second measure is a G. It has a D in the bass, which is the fifth. Now the second chord form is a D and it's strictly the type 2 bar chord that we know with a D in the bass. The third chord is a G with a B in the bass which of course is our third. And the last chord of the second measure is an A with an E in the bass which is our fifth. Now it gets a little more interesting up here on measure 3. We're going to go up higher we have got a D with the D in the bass. Now our second chord is an A with a C sharp in the bass, which is our third. Now we're going to play a B minor with a B in the bass, which is our root of course. Now our last chord of measure three is an F sharp minor with an A in the bass. That is our third. Now we move on to measure four. We're going to play a G chord with a G in the bass. Our second chord of the fourth measure is a D with an F sharp in the bass, which is our third. Now as a pivot point, I'm actually going to hold my second finger in place and form this G chord with an open D and an open G. So the D of course is our fifth of the chord. And last but not least, our last chord is the A and I'm going to play it with the E in the bass. Which of course is just our A chord as we would play it and extending the pinky on the fifth fret to the A we've successfully moved through the alternate chord streams. Now I'm going to play it to the music. Okay, here we go. Well, we sure have learned a lot in today's lesson, and before I get out of here, I just want to share some info with you really quick, because every now and then I'm able to save you guys a little bit of money on products that I like, and by special arrangement with my good friends over at the Guitar Wheel, I can get you a little discount at checkout at Amazon.com. So if you put in this code, EZGTR123, at the checkout process, you can get a little discount. All right, you guys, we'll practice hard. Definitely keep those emails coming, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.